Today is October 30th, and there is some news in Yankee land. Some options declined, some options accepted. Let's do it. Let's talk Yanks. Talking Yanks with old drum boy, drum boy Jake. Recaps galore and weekly awards. Stat lines, steaming hot takes. Your Yankees news with these two fine dudes. It's time for Talking Yanks. Talking Yanks with old John Boy, John Boy and Jake. Talking Yanks with old John Boy, John Boy and Jake. Hello and welcome to Talking Yanks. Thank you very much for tuning in today, the last day of October, maybe, or you're listening to this the day we recorded it, which is the second to last day of October. 31 months in October, Jake. What do you got on that? Hell, even 31 days in October, they'll say. Uh, each uh, month is a day in 2020. Is what they'll say. Mm-hmm. James, talking Yanks people, how you doing? A little sneaky talking Yanks uh, Friday afternoon. We got some Yankees news, so we decided to get on the mic and spit it before we try to forget it. And... Yeah, man, it's all right. It's uh, it, I I just said this on talking baseball, but kind of the past forty eight hours have been a like, it's like a lull. Just like ah, we got through this season. It kind of ended okay in the world of baseball. It sucked for Yankees fans at the end, but like we got through this weird sixty game season in Dutton. I don't know if it's because the Dodgers won, but we haven't seen anybody saying, like, this season doesn't count. Like, <laughs> everyone got past that, and I think part of it is because oh, of the Dodgers. Don't check my feed. Yeah, I mean, you got a couple couple one-twos on there. There's always going to be one or two bad people, but we drown them out, Jim. Um, so, I don't know, man, and we're, uh, we're back in it. I mean, we're back pretty much live in free agency, and we had a— uh, a little bit of a scare yesterday, I'll say. I'll, I got scared that Zach Britton was, was going to be off the Yankees somehow, and he's not. So there's that. Guardy, we, we got stuff going on. Yeah, there's a couple news. So, uh, you know, the, the schedule moving forward will be two times a week. Uh, you know, one voicemail episode, or it might be an interview, and then, you know, news updates. We'll figure it out. But two times a week, starting... Hell, I don't know. Might, maybe next week, maybe the week after that, maybe because we are taking a vacation coming up soon eventually it'll be two times a week might be one next week and this was an impromptu episode because there's news so we're going to get those as well big news jake really big news the yankees outright winston sawyer yeah um what was his middle name uh winalda man it was some winston wiccan it has a w W and a y Y. in it which is what we always get tripped up on i thought it was wiccan with a y it's a Wiccan with two Y's. Selwyn. Selwyn. I'll never remember that. No, and We've you done this it. game a whole bunch. So they outright him. I mean, he was on the 40-man, so they had a yeah. clear room. Not news. The big news is that the Yankees pick up Zach Britton's option. They decline Brett Gardner's option, and they decline Jay Happ's option. So we'll start with Britton. As you said, you're getting scary because if you're not keeping up around the league, every option is getting declined as... Uh, owners uh, and teams, mm, I was going to say cry poor, but they did lose money, and it just, but it just seems like... Still doesn't mean they're poor. Doesn't mean they're poor, but it, yeah. it's a barrage of, uh, just to let everyone know, we did get fucked by not having fans in the seats for the full season, and this is how this offseason is going to go. I mean, I mean, big players are, not, are getting their options declined. Um, Brad Hand, Giorgio... Colton uh, Wong, Colton Wong, uh, Charlie Morton, Zanino, uh, you know, and the options that aren't crazy. So when all that was happening, I was like, "Oh shit, the Yankees may really decline Britain's option because, you know, the first thing Hal said was we took a big hit, and it's a thirteen million dollar option, but they pick it up. So that's kind of cool. I mean, if you lose Britain and you don't have Canley next year, you're down, and you." You got to build your trust back up in auto, but I mean, they needed a Britain. They need more bullpen. If they lost Britain, they were screwed. So they bring him back. I wonder how this plays into the money moving forward, though. But before we talk about that, the season is in full swing and the action is still unfolding. So head over to DraftKings Sportsbook. 
America's top-rated sportsbook app with so many storylines across both professional and collegiate sports. This is the time to check out all the DraftKings Sportsbook has to offer. If you haven't tried the app yet, head to the App Store now because you don't want to miss this. To celebrate the showdown in Happy Valley, DraftKings Sportsbook is giving all new users the chance to turn $1 into 100 when placing a bet on either Ohio State or Penn State. Whoo! Additionally, DraftKings Sportsbook is giving all new users the chance to receive a sign-up bonus of up to $1,000 hairs on top of those great sign-up offers. DraftKings offers great odds boosts every Sunday to help you make it rain. DraftKings is safe, reliable, and secure, making it easy for you to deposit and withdraw your money at your convenience. Download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code JUMBO. When you sign up to get this can't-miss offer, pick either Penn State or Ohio State, Nittany Lions or Buckeyes. Bet $1, cash $100 if they win. That's one to win a hundy. When you use promo code JUMBOY during sign-up for a limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook, you must be 21 or older, New Jersey only. Bonus comprised of a first deposit bonus and a first bet match, each up to $500. Deposit bonus... Requires 25 times play through restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Yeah, and it's my my brain in free agency has been dancing around pretty wildly because when Brad Hand, uh, one year, $10 million. Brad Hand led the league in saves last year. His numbers are actually pretty similar across the board to Zach Britton. You know, one year, ten million, and this is what we've run into in these recent years. Our teams are fine with the short contracts. Teams just get scared with the multi-year deals because those are the ones that can backfire you. So when Brad Hand led the league in saves last year, okay, if you don't like you know old school way of tracking sets, he had a FIP that started with a one. Brad Hand was really good last year, and he gets declined his uh, one year, ten million dollar option. Where it's like, okay, Zach Britton, he's kind of of a similar ilk, different kinds of pitchers, blah, blah, blah. I get it. But, you know, I I hit the panic button a little bit. I was for sure they wouldn't do the two years, which would have left it in Britton's uh, option for the one year, whatever. They do it, and it's, it's exciting. I mean, Zach Britton has been really good as a New York Yankee. I feel like we had that one insecure period in 2019 where he lost the zone for a couple games Mm -hmm. the fact that i that's what i'm pointing to shows how really good he is and it's it's what kind of pitcher he is and that's why the analytics is kind of thrown off by him but the fact that this dude doesn't really give up home runs i mean in today's baseball you know makes him even more of a freak so be happy that Britain's back. I mean, you know, he started this year closing while Chapman was on the code. He can fill in closer and be pretty damn good. Yeah. So uh, the fact that Zach Britton is back is is pretty good, and we almost didn't expect him to be gone, and then there was about five hours of panic, and then he's back, so so that's good. Yeah, the other one is, I mean, you talk about um, Brad Hand, but Darren O'Day yeah. for the Braves. He's making $3 million for one year. He was really good. And he was good for them this year. I mean, he was really good. He had a 1-1 ERA. In yeah. 19, I mean, he does get one out. And the sidewinding righty, yeah. It's, well, it's the a little three different, batter rule. But still, yeah. It's $3 million, though. Yeah. Like, yeah. very market price. And, so, and, and I think this is, and more importantly, and this is what we've been alluding to throughout the season, mostly during the Yankees' low moments, is that this offseason is going to be bizarre. And, Jim, I, I've actually started spinning this in a somewhat – Positive way in my mind Because uh, Colton Wong So he he was the other one that really sent out Some fire alarms yesterday um, You know kind of part of the core Of the St. Louis Cardinals who have been a pretty good Team the past few years He gets released gold glove defense His batting stats don't jump off the sheet Like you'd expect them to Still decent batting average decent on base With a gold glove um, You know and I think his his was around One year 10 million and uh, you know, we're getting into some baseball weeds, but Cesar Hernandez who ended up on the Indians last year. He had a similar thing happen. So um, I don't know. I mean, guys aren't going to get paid, paid this offseason, and you wonder what it means. Um, you know, if nobody is spending, you know, can Cashman make some sneaky moves this year? Like I, I actually started to get myself excited that, 
you know, there there could be these potential veteran bargain deals for one year that the Yankees may be able to stumble into, whether it's a, a fourth starting pitcher, whether it's, mm-hmm. um, you know, if they're going for infield help. I don't know. So I, I have found kind of a, a positive spin zone on that. Yeah, I mean, because there's, there's deals out there that can excite you. Uh, Charlie Morton, New Jersey kid, pretty good. They should have got, you know, now we can say – when they offered half the money that they offered him after 2018, they should have offered that to Morton. He was the better signing. Wasn't his whole thing he would only play in Tampa, though? Florida. Because his family's, family's there, Florida, yeah. So. So, but, I mean, you yeah. know, if he wants to waive that, there, you could get yourself excited about some of these moves. Even, like, yeah. hand in the bullpen. Okay, yeah, pick him up. But who knows what the Yankees' budget is, how strapped they are, and how many how, are these guys diamonds in the roughs? They don't really seem like the... The new baseball way, which is why you're seeing them let go. Uh, Hap, they don't pick up his option. Um, that was, I mean, no shock there. No. That relationship seemed to sour pretty well. No. You know, I'm reading, like, the write-up on it, and they're like, the write-up is, uh, where is it? I read the one line, and they phrased it funny, like, um, mm, like, Hap wasn't that bad. <laughs> Something like that. Oh, here it is. To his credit, Hap was actually pretty productive in 2020, yeah. and that's how everyone talks about it. Yeah, because he's got such like a it was just bad around him. It's it, the J Hap experience was so bad because he was so that one that first playoff start, and then the first four months of 2019 or whatever it was, he was just straight up bad. Or yeah. outside of that, <laughs> J Hap was pretty good. He finishes his Yankee run, 21 and 10, a 4.13 ERA. Which is basically J Hap's career, but it's it's felt so weird. And yeah, you know, you saw it in J Hap's press conferences, and I mean, you know, that that final playoff appearance. Whether you know, again, you can be mad at the Yankees, you should be mad at Hap too. Um, but yeah, that uh, they were going their separate ways. Mm-hmm. We'll see. I mean, Hap could go go somewhere and be. Pitch well. What if there's a and hey, if you're sitting at home, that's like, hey, fuck J. Hap. Like J. Hap just lost seventeen million dollars, kinda, kinda, yeah. You know, <laughs> he's gonna. He's if you're gonna, wondering why he was pissy no, you know during the say? press conference, you know what I say? Uh, expect some more pissy press conferences from Hap. Like expect some quotes and maybe even like some grievances filed because oh, he think, thinks he was wrong. He's going to Seattle. He's gonna start toking it up. Well, if the, if, the, if the DH doesn't stay in the National League, send them to, like, Philly. Be there. Homer, f- Homer Park. Okay. Need a hitter park. All right, send them to San Cincinnati. San Diego. Homer Park. Send them to – no, not San Diego. He can't wear those outfits and be a part of hot. that team. Um, I mean, he'd be back with Rothschild. Forgetting how hot Jay happens? He might, Larry would remind him too much of Yankees. He can't go to San Diego. Send him to San Francisco. Yeah, all right. J Hap to San Francisco, done. Oh, why would they do that? Uh, but yeah, do it. Gossman. Uh, the Yankees declined Brett Gardner's option. It was for ten million dollars. Uh, I don't flinch at this. Uh, kind of knew they were going to do this, and also it doesn't necessarily mean Brett's not back. Almost every reporter was like, "But expect them to talk again." Yeah, and they've done this before with Brett. They declined an option before and then gave him another deal. And I think that. I don't know. I can't really picture him wanting to be anywhere else, or but who's to say? I mean, if he wants to go get the more money, go get it. But it seems like, you know, maybe you get him for a $3 million deal as your fourth outfielder. Um, they definitely can use him. I know that uh, Clint proved himself and should be the starting left fielder. I agree with that. But, I mean, look at the injuries. Look at the performance once he got his, like, 70 at-bats in and was really, like, getting going. He was the hottest Yankee for the last three, four weeks of a of – a, of a 13-week season, stat, of a 12-week season? His stats on the year ended up very close to Brett Gardner. Constant Gardner. So, yeah, we'll we'll see. I mean, I, I'd expect him back in pinstripes, three to five millions, probably the range. And, you know, everyone, when they have their free agent tweets and they're saying, oh, come to my team or stay with the team, hometown stuff, this is the 1% where there is a little bit of that going on. We, you know, we saw... When we went to winter meetings and they were finishing up the Cole contract, like Gardy's agent was there and basically like, yeah, we're just, you know, seeing what money's left. So, and the Yankees have taken pretty good care of Brett Gardner when a lot of us, not us, but a lot of you were yelling, you know, why are they bringing this bum back? He's old, blah, blah, blah. Also, I'll tell you what, go look at the backup center field crop 
Because there isn't one. <laughs> that market doesn't really exist. Slash, it's players who are a lot worse than Brett Gardner. So the fact that he can still play center well, he could play a great left field. And again, his stat line ends up being Brett Gardner again after having an atrocious start and then he got going. So uh, he started in the playoff games. Uh, they took care of him in a couple of these last contracts. So don't be surprised if it's team friendly, one year, couple mil, and you should be happy about that for your fourth outfielder. Yeah, I like Brett Gardner. Yeah. He was really good at the end of the season. He was really good. He started, like, all the playoff games over Clint, and I know that hurts a lot of your souls, but he also, it was deservedly so. It's it's not going to, this one's not going to be quick. Either it's going to be so quick, or it's going to be, like, the last move. Yeah, it's interesting, right? Because normally we'd say it would be the first move. Either it's the first move, like they did CC that one year, or it's, hey, Brett, we're, you're coming back, but yeah. we got to take, like they did with Cole, we got to take care of a bunch of other stuff. So I think, you know, either it's the first move or the last move, which makes you. Yeah, that's interesting because it seems like it would be the last move. I also just picture them getting it done. Like, this is the number, Brett, you're in. Yeah, yeah. I'm in. Yeah. The Yankees say three million. Brett says four and a half. They land at three seven five and punch it. Yeah, done. Some other news that we got is that uh, like all of the coaches went and and interviewed for the Tiger Shop, yeah. which now went to Hinch. Thames went there. Nevin went there. Yeah, I think someone else too. Even yeah, Mendoza. You. Mendoza. Yeah, I think it was. So it's good experience for those guys yeah. to go do it, but they went with Hinch and own Cheater, so that's interesting. Ooh. We got them back, so Booney's probably happy. Fe- Nevin's like Fevin. Nevin's Fevin. his buddy, um, yeah. So he's probably happy. And Thames has been gotten rave reviews, uh, so everyone's probably happy that they're last, back. Next year's probably Nevin's last year. Gets a job somewhere. He's hot. Think? I think the Yankees have another nice run. Well, yeah. What if he beefs up, gets fat? You think that helps him Ooh. stay a Yankee? Interesting. The pinstripes help there. I don't know. We gotta let's have Nevin on this off season. Okay. We like him. Yeah. Um he's real. Some other news is that Anduhar or Shella or Anduhar, Gary, and someone else are playing winter ball. Yeah, that, that Gary news was something. Um and again, it you know, does it mean much? If Gary Sanchez dominates winter ball, no. Herman. Okay, so that's the three. So if you want to pay, you can pay to watch those games. Yeah, and it's a it it again, if if you're a logical Yankee fan and you think Gary Sanchez is you know, lazy or something like that, you know, Gary Sanchez, this isn't like a a normal thing for a guy to do. But because he had such a bad year, like Gary Sanchez is getting reps in. He wants to go play real baseball. So good for him. Hey, maybe he figures it out, maybe he doesn't. That leads into an, a bunch of other issues, but good for him to be willing to do that because, you know, not a lot of guys that start getting paid playing baseball do this. Yeah, I know. I, I wonder, you know, shortened season, so I, want, I don't know around the league if more people are doing this or not, but he's... I think, didn't they say this was the first time since 16 or even 15? I forget, but it's his first time going back and playing winter ball, so kind of nuts. Hopefully it destroys. Be cool. If he was bad. Yeah. There's d- d- Him being good doesn't do much, like you said. But no. him being bad. Him being bad would suck. Does a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. All right, I think that's really all. Just a little quick impromptu episode. Have a fantastic weekend. We'll be back next week. I think voicemails will be making a turn. We'll try to get some guests on. Um, Jake and I are taking the second week of November off kind of completely since we just went crazy for 14 weeks. And then we'll be back. And, I mean, this this will keep going. There will be more news and more rumors, and the stove will be burning, and I think it's going to be a wild and weird offseason. Yeah, I so. wouldn't be surprised because don't they – I mean, I think there's other guys – you know, the the rumored Canely thing is that they're not going to – Yeah, they're going to do him with like they did Evaldi and Pineda. They're going to non-tender him because he's going to be hurt the whole season. So, yeah, there's going to be more news coming. We always – you know, I wonder if this is the last year we trick ourselves, but we're always like, oh, off season's coming. And then they officially canceled winter meetings. There's news. Makes sense. Should we host our own? I think so. Should 
just retweet it right now and be like, we will be hosting winter meetings at John Blue Media's headquarters. Come by. <laughs> Whoever wants to come through. I think we do a cyber winter meetings. Okay. All right. Love you all. See you later. Go Yankees. Go Yanks. Tell them, Grams. Go Yankees. Sign everybody. Let's go Yankees. Let's go Yankees. Sign Pedro Estacio. Let's go